Welcome to episode four, the final episode in our series of looking at how we're using the Autodesk simulation solutions to help ease the pain points found in the industrial electrical equipment industry. We're going to be using Autodesk Simulation Mechanical 360 to look at how drop testing of your structures works. My name is James Herzing. As a quick review of episode three, we were using Autodesk Simulation CFD 360 to see how we could heat and cool this component. We put a power generation on some of the components and used air to cool it from a fan through a vent. The reason you use these simulations is to determine what materials should be used for best heat dissipation. You can also determine the necessary air intake, say by a fan, and then you can use these multiple design scenarios to combine the two to determine the most affordable way to do this and yet have a safe product. So again, in this series, we've looked at both simulation mechanical and simulation CFD 360. These are going to take care of all of your structural and fluid flow needs. So in this episode, looking at drop tests, we need to know the reasons why people do drop tests to start. Well, for one reason, you have to verify a safe setup of the enclosures in your factory. These are going to be carried around on forklifts or items like that, and they're going to be raised from some height. They could drop, and we don't want them to damage the structure. You can, have to, you can determine the drop height that these can be dropped from without failure by doing this. The denting of these enclosures could cause problems with the functionality, not to mention the heating and cooling. The welds on the structures may fail, and the components inside, such as the wires, could become disconnected if they're dropped too hard. The problems with just prototype testing, so we don't just make these enclosures and drop them. Why? Because it's a very manual and time-consuming process. Especially when you're getting into enclosures of a large size, such as the ones we're looking at, it becomes very difficult to not only set them up, but actual, act, accurate, act, act, So what are the problems with prototype drop testing? Well, when you get into very large structures, like the ones that we're working with, it becomes difficult to accurately gauge the stress and determine how much stress they're seeing, not to mention setting it up is very time consuming. Prototypes are also very expensive, especially in a structure of this size. There are thousands of ways that these could be dropped, and they can all be looked at in parallel when using Simulation Mechanical 360. If parts fail unexpectedly, at this stage, it becomes very expensive to do a complete redesign. So again, in this episode, we're going to be using Mechanical 360, where we can significantly reduce the number of prototypes you're going to be making for your products because you no longer have to do the testing on them. You may run many tests of the same, at the same time on the cloud in parallel, different drop heights, different orientations, anything you need. Upfront analysis can help you re-avoid these redesigns yet you can still choose the ideal material for this. So let's go ahead and get into the software and see how we set up one of these drop tests. We're going to start by looking at the model in Inventor Fusion. We're going to do this so that we can easily simplify the model and make sure there aren't any components there that we don't want to analyze. If we go into the enclosure and hide some parts, you can see the components that we're looking at. You can easily just click and delete on any of the components that aren't necessary for the analysis. It's important to keep in mind that in this model, as well as yours, you use as few parts as you need because the more parts, the more elements and the longer the analysis takes. So we click on the Mechanical 360 button and here you can see everything was imported automatically. We have two types of parts, surfaces and solids. The surfaces are going to be defined as shells, so we're going to use the plate slash shell mesh option for those. You can see that is roughly the first 27 parts or so. Oh, 25 parts. So we're going to right click and choose CAD mesh options and then part. When we do that, we can click on the radio button next to plate slash shell and define an absolute mesh size of 0.45. When we click OK on this, we can then go ahead and choose to mesh the solid parts with the same mesh size, changing our retries to zero and going to make an absolute mesh size of 0.45 once again. With that, we can click OK and choose to mesh our model. After the model has successfully meshed, we're going to have to go ahead and define both a thickness and a material for all of the shells, and then a material for the solids. We can edit the element definition, 
And when we do that, we can type in a thickness of 1 8 of an inch, so 0.125 inches, and then click OK. This is going to apply this thickness to all of the shell elements that we have defined. Following that, we're going to go ahead and right click again, and this time we're going to define the material. Again, we're going to just make this simple and define all of these to be made out of the same aluminum. If we go edit material, we can choose aluminum and define these. When we have that selected, we're actually going to go down and define the material for the bricks as well, or the solid parts. We have them defined previously in Inventor Fusion, but we define them as steel. So we can easily just change that by choosing aluminum out of our library and clicking OK. So with that, we have a few things left to do. We need to apply an impact plane, and we need to put on gravity. So if we select impact plane, you see that we have a couple options as to where it's going to be located. But first, we need to know how far this drop is going to be. So inquiring on the bottom of the enclosure, we can see where the y, y location is. And we can correspond that to our impact plane. So if we choose a new impact plane and make it in the XZ plane, we can use an offset uh, that's going to represent a two foot drop. So we go ahead and take our numbers into consideration. I believe it was 39. So 39 and 24 will give us 63 inches. And so we're now going to be dropping, say, off of a forklift down two feet. Next, we have to go into the analysis parameters. And we're going to choose our event. We go ahead and give it two sections here so that the duration is 0.5 seconds and 0.5 seconds. The first one is just going to be the initial drop until it impacts the impact plane. And the next one is going to be the actual impact. So we're going to have more time steps there. Next, we define gravity, which is going to be the only load that we need to have active. So gravity is going to pull the enclosure down due to its weight. And that's going to be the only stress we see when it impacts. So with that, we're going to be able to go to the analysis button and choose to run the simulation. And this will send it off to the cloud. And when it's done analyzing, we'll get our email back saying, your results are ready to view. And we can then go retrieve them automatically and view them in the results environment. So here we are in the results. And you can see that our enclosure is up in the air two feet above our impact plane. If we go ahead and choose where in the load case we want to be looking, we can actually go to an exact step to determine what the stress is in our model when it impacts. So if we go to time step 16 here, we're going to see that the stress in our model becomes uh, much higher. So you can see the stress here. And you see our stress is about 42,000 PSI. Well, that gives us a good idea that things aren't going to work out here, mostly because of the way this was modeled. A big, heavy fan has no support on that thin shell. So it gives us an idea that we would need further uh, reinforcements to make this work. All right, so if you haven't already by now downloaded the data set, you can go to the link above and get the set perfect for this analysis. It's going to have it all set up ready for your drop test. You're going to then go through these three simple steps. Again, these are the steps you're going to follow if you're going to be running your own analysis as well on your own model. You need to simplify your CAD geometry. Get rid of the details that aren't needed. You don't need to model the nuts and washers if they're not important to the analysis. You can then define an impact plane and gravity. We don't really need any other loads because it's going to be falling from a certain height, hitting that impact plane, and the only force acting on it is gravity. And then review your results and make sure that they make sense. If the, if the stress seems too high or if it's displacing too much, maybe something went wrong with the analysis. If you follow these simple steps, you're going to be able to easily analyze any of your drop tests just as well. If you had any trouble following along with anything in this series, downloading the models or the software, please feel free to reach out to me at simsquad at autodesk.com. Also, you could call me directly at 855-237-5746. If you need some more information on the different analysis types that we have available, some of the hottest features coming up in the simulation software at Autodesk, go to simulation-tv and take a look at some of the other episodes. Thank you again for joining me through this series, and I hope you've learned something.